Normally, their husbands take centre stage. But this week, it's Africa's first ladies who are in the spotlight. At the 7th African Conference on Sexual Health and Reproductive Rights, first ladies from Ghana, Mali and Gambia, to name just a few, are uniting to discuss how they can make life better for young people. Improving sexual health services comes high on that list. We will also work out solutions on reduction of maternal and infant mortality, elimination of child and forced marriages, and reduction of teenage pregnancies across the continent. My colleague First Ladies and I have challenged ourselves to make the year 2016 one in which we will increase our activities and efforts towards supporting the growth and progress of our continent. Good sexual health services and economic growth go hand in hand. Countries with larger working populations and lower fertility rates do economically better than those where there are more children. It's called the demographic dividend. According to the head of the United Nations Population Fund, it will require a huge amount of investment for Africa to reap that benefit. 5% to health, it doesn't go anywhere. 5% to education doesn't go anywhere. You need major investments and you need incubators. You need to find young people who are talented and who would do the things that, needed to be, that needs to be done. Japan started by copying people. China started by copying the rest of the world. Let us steal, let us steal and copy. Let us incubate. Let us make sure that our young people do what they have to do. In West Africa, currently more than 60% of the population is under the age of 24. Sectors such as education and healthcare have already been earmarked for some serious investment to try and bring that percentage down. But talking to youth here in Ghana, it's clear that there has to be a lot of investment in sex education too. In the rural areas, it's likely that you won't even find that kind of um, information at all. Because first and foremost, in rural areas, literacy is quite high. So you can't, even if you go put posters around, no one really know what it is. And secondly, they don't, most of them don't have facilities. But even in urban areas where there is better access to sexual health services, there are still hurdles to overcome. But even with the knowledge, some people still don't want to go because there is a stigma on sexual, um, sexual and reproductive health and rights, that kind of education. When you're talking about sex, people think that um, you're bad, and when you're talking about abortion, it's like it's, it's, a, very, it's a big taboo, like it's, it's immoral. Breaking those taboos and making sex something to talk about will be a key discussion point over the next two days. Katarina Vitozzi, CCTV, Accra, Ghana.